Pinch Pot Teapot. I love Pinch Pots. I really do. Like they are the most straightforward of ceramic techniques. It's you and your fingers. That's basically it. That's what's going on. So before we even get started, I do want to talk a little bit about your hands. If you, uh, you know, if you notice, of course, that uh, different digits have different strengths. So like your pinky and your ring finger, they're gonna be a lot softer. The touch is a lot softer with them. Whereas your pointer and middle finger are uh, firmer than that and your thumb is the strongest out of all of your digits. I'll also use the palm of my hands when I really wanna push, you know, make big pushes, big changes. So keep that in mind, different parts of your hands are being used. Um, I have two pounds of clay right here for my little teapot. Um, and it's, I prefer a clay that's pretty squishy and soft. If you have clay that's a little bit stiff, you can, you can take it and um, make a, a rough pinch pot, spray some water on the inside, crunch it back up, make another rough pinch pot, spray some water on the inside, crunch it back up, and you know, keep doing that until it is a nice, pliable um, consistency. All right, so. I'm going to start off just by smacking this into a nice egg shape. It's always nice to smack things. The world would be a better place if you all had more access to things to smack. Alright, by tossing it back from hand to hand, I'll get a nice consistent ball of clay. So now I got my little egg o clay, and I'm just gonna slice it in half. All right, and that way I have two sides equal equal uh, equal size. So I know I'm gonna be starting off with two balls of clay that are reasonably close to each other. All right this down here. I'm going to get started on this side first. Now I'm holding this in my left hand and I'm going to be pinching with my right hand. You figure out which hand works best for whichever. It's really up to you. Take my thumb, push straight down into the center, like so, until I'm about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Yeah. And I can feel the tip of my thumb and my middle finger here. If you're having trouble figuring out how close that is, you know how close your fingers are to each other, try closing your eyes. It sounds kind of dumb, but it works. Because if you close your eyes, you can really kind of feel. All right, so now that I've got that, I just wanna start opening up this interior diameter and stretching it out. So for this, my strongest digit, my thumb is gonna be on the inside, pushing out. These uh, fingers, the weaker fingers, are gonna be on the outside, kind of pushing in. The effect is gonna to be to make a sort of tall bowl shape that. So pinch, turn, 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 pinch, turn. I'm just going to keep on going. I want to do more pinching and shaping at the base right now so that I'm making a nice flat floor. It'll be harder to get to the floor later when the clay is all pinched out you know, when the shape is all uh, most of the way done. So I'm gonna leave alone the clay up here at the lip and focus more down here. And then as I thin it out, I'll start working my way up the walls. And uh, that is easier to control that way. So I'm pinching like this, like that. So the walls are thinner here than they are here. The thinner your walls get, also the softer your touch needs to be. So right now my touch is actually fairly soft as at the bottom the walls are a lot thinner. But as I start moving up, I'm going to start increasing the pressure again.
See? Now you can see the wall thickness. I mean, I don't know if you can see or not. I can see. The wall thickness is not perfectly even from lip to floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little cup with my hand, my left hand, and I'm gonna use my right hand to kind of smear the, the clay up the sides. Let's see if you can see that. And try to get the walls a nice even consistency. All right, so now I've got that a fairly even consistency, and now I wanna thin out the lip a little bit more. So I'm gonna use that strongest digit, my thumb, on the outside and my fingers on the inside. Now the fingers on the inside are not pushing out. If your, if your piece starts flaring out when you do this, it means that your fingers on the inside are, are pushing out. Don't let them do that. They're not allowed to, just your thumb. Your thumb is kind of making a, it's almost like a snap gesture. See like this? squeezing that clay up, rolling that clay up the side and over. And see, I get a little extra height when I do that. All right, once I've got that and, and the clay sort of thinned out all the way around, now I can kind of go in and do more gentle pinches that are really more just about making the walls consistent and even. Again, the thumb on the outside is the boss if I want the walls to go straight up. If I want them to go out, then obviously I would push more from the inside. Okay? So there, there we go. It's in pretty good shape. Now there's still some thinning that I want to do with this and shaping, but I'm going to leave it a little bit thick. Like right now the walls are about that thick. So um, I want to leave that clay in there so that I can go back and shape this more a little bit later um, by leaving that little extra thickness, a little bit of extra weight in the clay. I'll be able to uh, make sure that the other half matches this half. All right, so I'm going to turn this upside down and do the exact same thing on the other side. Now some people um, just smack out two separate balls of clay and uh, pinch them out, but I honestly find it a lot easier to smack up one big ball, cut it in half. And I think it just sort of, because it's starting off from the same diameter, I just wind up with something a lot more consistent that matches up more easily. All right, so once again, this is all about getting the floor set and the clay thinned out there first before I get started on the walls. And now I'm, I'm ready to start thinning this part out in here by smearing up a little opening This clay is very wet.
right? So that's a fairly even consistency up to the lip. Now this is where I start looking at the diameter of these two pieces because I'm want, going to want to be attaching them to each other and I need to make sure that they stay the same um, so that they'll match up well. This is a little bit smaller so I can pinch a little bit from the outside or inside to make sure that it matches. that and then I'm going to do the same thing that sort of snapping motion where I drag that clay on the outside up like that Oh, see, now this is a little bit bigger, so that this is where that little extra clay in here comes to my advantage. I can just pinch out a wee bit and increase the diameter of this so that they match each other better. Haha, uh -huh, that's pretty close. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do a little bit of smoothing on this because this is going to be the last time I'll have a chance to get to the inside of what's going to become a teapot. So I want to make sure that the interior is nice and smooth and solid before I do any attaching. It matters a lot with teapots you have that liquid moving around. You want it to be in good shape. Um, it's also harder to clean if you don't um, if you don't have a smooth interior. Now because this clay is so wet, I'm going to need barely anything to get the two sides to stick to each other. A little bit of toothbrush and water kind of roughs up the surface and makes it sticky. Right? So you don't want it to be shiny or slickery, you just want it to be kind of sticky. Now I'm going to keep my hands big with my fingers all stretched out so that I'm holding the, the piece, you know, as, as steady as I can. Um, once this is, this clay pod is, you know, the lips are attached to each other, it's actually, you know, you can, I can do a lot to shape it. But for right now, everything's very flibbity flobbity. So this is the, the tricky part. You know, by keeping my hands big and soft and relaxed, um, I can hold this without distorting the shape too much. And then like you can see where this is hanging over, kind of go back in and make sure I can get the lip to match at this point. It is very much like if you think in, in terms of like holding a baby, you want to use your hands. They're, they're strong and firm and they, they hold things steady, but you're not squish, squishing and pinching. So see, now that I've got these two uh, ends meeting each other, now I'm going to smear the edges towards each other. Just enough to kind of tack the two sides towards each other. And make 
make sure that the seal is strong. Some people will add a coil of clay. I honestly find that I tend to, if I add a coil of clay, it's usually too much. Um, but you do you, you do you. Lots of people do it, it's perfectly good. All right, and again, I'm being very gentle all the way around. Everything looks giant and then lumpy right now, like it looks like a mess. Um, that is fine, I don't care, I'm fine with that. We'll, I'll do some shaping later. Right now my only focus is getting these two edges well, you know, well sealed with each other so that it's a nice solid match. Now I've seen some people when they're putting these together deliberately make one pot bigger than the other so that you'll have sort of an overhang that you can attach to each other. Again, I, more often than not, I, I, I mess that one up and then I've got a really thick spot that winds up cracking. Uh, in the drying process, but I know other people who make it work, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. All right, so now my little pod is made, and I've got a little air bubble inside here, which is keeping the clay walls steady. So I can do things like take a paddle and start shaping. Notice the postcard underneath. The postcard trick is the best. Now, by holding it up here and kind of gently pulling up, I can keep it from collapsing on itself, you know, kind of turning too much into a pear, but you can see it's already starting to go a little bit pear-shaped, which is an aesthetic choice that you can totally make. You can be like, no, I want a pear-shaped. Um, I want a pear-shaped teapot. Pear-shaped teapots are cool. These are totally legit choices. But you can see as I paddle how those finger marks and stuff are starting to go away. really hitting hard. This is a very gentle, very gentle little smack. Don't go too crazy. You can always increase the force if you need to, but if you've succeeded in um, collapsing your piece uh, by pressing too hard, there's not much you can do about that. All right, so see, now I'm starting to just shape. I'm putting a little foot here by squeezing in more with my pinky and my ring. And remember, pinky and ring are gonna be the ones that are the least strong. So this is really very gentle. The purpose of this is more about like the squeeze and the turn. If you keep doing it gently, keep moving, keep doing it, you eventually wind up with something that's very symmetrical. And that's something that often frustrates people when they're trying to do pinch pots is they're like, oh, I want symmetry, which is cool. I mean, I love symmetry too. And it is not the only game in town. I do want to point that out. So you might decide later on that like, sure, symmetry, it's nice, but it, you don't have to achieve that. But I want to at least show people how to do that under the principle of it's better to know um, and choose not to do it, then feel like you have to choose asymmetry. All right, see? Go back. Now I got something that's kind of Christmas tree shaped. I think I want something a little bit more traditional, chubby teapot. So I'm gonna start gently pressing like this, pushing down with my thumbs, but oh, so soft, so soft. You can always increase the pressure if you need to, but you can't, see? Like even just that little bit right there. I will say in favor of asymmetry, I really love the way that pinch pot, you can see the finger marks. It's so direct. It's so like immediate and, uh, and intimate and like, you know, literally the hand of the maker is all over this piece, all over every square inch of it. And I think that's very lovely and appealing. Um, you know, sometimes with other techniques, um, the wheel, slabs, you know, you really don't see the hand of the maker as much. And that's cool too. Uh, you know, I love, I love those as well. But uh, that you can get such an intimate kind of thing going on with the touch seeing the literal touch of the maker on the piece, I think is very lovely. All right.
okay, this is kind of getting somewhere shape-wise. Now, my hands are a little bit dirty from all of that pinching. You can see all the, the mud all over them. So I'm gonna clean them off because um, I wanna clean the shape a little bit and clean hands do a better job of cleaning the shape. So I'm just gonna grab this sponge here. towel. I know I have I have my red rubber rib. Ah, everyone's favorite, red rubber rib. All right, you can kind of bend it to describe the curve that you want and use that like that, see, to sort of influence the shape of your pot. Take your time with these steps. There's no rush. You don't have to rush. Like I said, I'm using super soft clay here. Um, so it's actually in my interest to be a little bit um, slow sometimes uh, in what I'm doing and to take my time. That gives the clay a chance to sort of firm up, settle up, kind of get into the shape that you, you want it to be. So like, you know, if you need to go to the bathroom or, or get yourself a drink of water or whatever. Now's a good time to just sort of let the shape rest. <clears throat> Gently sort of zhuzh, zhuzh this into, spit, into, into place, zhuzh spelled Z-H-U-Z-H. Such a good word, zhuzh. this rest I swear I will let this rest in just a minute I keep on messing with it all right it's one of the hardest things in pottery stop messing with it uh, and while I'm letting this rest I'm gonna make a spout um, real quick so to make a spout I'm gonna start off with just a little pinch of clay and I'm gonna make it kind of in a little I don't want to say carrot, that's overstating it. A sort of little elongated egg shape, somewhere in there, to start. And I'm going to use the handle of a paintbrush, and I'm just going to stick the handle in the pa of the paintbrush in, like it was my thumb. straight in, but this time I'm going to go all the way through, like so. All right, now a spout if, is, if you think of a funnel, if you think of a funnel, that, that, that helps when you're making spouts, right? So I'm going to want part of it to be the tube of the funnel, so I'm going to keep my fingers long, and I'm just trying to make the tube of the funnel. I'm not pinching the whole thing. I'm just making that little tube part. Again, super gentle. This is a small piece of clay. I don't need to squish the hell out of it. It's just, that's not necessary. I just want to sort of make this part a little bit longer and narrower. See how that kind of thins out the clay, the walls are getting narrower, and the, the tube part of the spout is getting longer. Now, it might be longer than I want it to be, which is fine, 
Um, cause I can just trim it off. It's easier to trim it off while the paintbrush is still on there. So I'm going to do that now. All right. Now I'm going to wriggle this paintbrush out. And now I am going to start using my fingers to start pinching here, this part. I'm going to make like a little, a little bowl. Just like I made with the with the teapot body, right? Now, so you can see my hole got a little bit closed up when I did that, which is fine. I just go back on the other side to make sure I reopen. So now I've got something that looks like kind of like a funnel. That will eventually be our teapot spout. Now, the way that the let's talk about let's talk about thermodynamics, shall we? Not thermodynamics, hydrodynamics. Um, the way that liquid moves through this. So if I put the spout on like this, that means that where the bottom of the spout is, is exactly how high you could fill this with tea. So that's why you see most teapot spouts kind of tilted up a bit so that um, you can have the spout at about the same level as the lid, but uh, um, not lower. So to do that, I can either pinch this part of the clay, the bottom part of the spout out more, or trim the top part of the spout more, or both. I actually go for both. So I'm just going to cut off a bit of the spout on one side. Oh, this clay is so soft. Like this. So see, I'm making like a little moon sliver of clay, and then I'm going to attach it to the other side. So, so see, so now there's kind of a tilt. I can, if I want, also bring the spout down a little bit. You want to be careful about not collapsing the spout when you do that. Um, it's not hard to, to collapse the spout when you bend it. Or I can always just trim off more of the spout, which is where I'm going with that. All right, now I have not attached it yet, obviously. I do not want to attach this yet. Everything is still way too soft to attach um, because when I attach, of course, I'm gonna to have to cut a hole from the body of the teapot to the spout of the teapot, right? And, um, and that loss of air pressure can cause the body of the teapot to collapse if the clay is too wet. So instead, I'm just gonna set this aside and let it rest. In the meantime, actually, why don't I just leave it on there for now? just so that I have an idea about where I'm going with this bad boy. All right, so now I can start thinking about the spout while I'm doing this. Or not the spout, I just made the spout, I'm sorry, the handle. 
Because all of this is pinched and because I rather like the way it looks, so I'm leaving that sort of pinchy aesthetic, you know, where you can see my finger marks all over this, I want to do the same for my handle. That is an entirely personal aesthetic choice and nobody has to make it. Um, this is all up to you. Um, but that's just what I like to do. Again, you do you, do you baby. So I've got this like elongated carrot kind of shape right here. And I want to make some decisions even before I get started. Do I want a handle that goes up and over a strap handle or do I want a handle on the side? I think the handle on the side, you know, in the back of the teapot, I should say, not the side, the back of the teapot um, is more common. It's a lot easier to make. The strap handle where it goes up from the top and over looks really cool, but is much harder to make. Um, and I don't know that it's all that much easier. There is also the technique of putting the handle on the side of the piece um, for pouring. That is another one is like, how awesome are you at math and how much do you love it? Because if you can, if you can get the positioning of that side handle just right, you've got a really nice pour. It's awesome. It's amazing. But uh, otherwise, it, it usually just looks like you screwed up and put two spouts on your piece. Um, and it doesn't feel very good to pour. So I'm going to go with a straight up, plain old, everybody knows how to use it and it's not too hard to make it, handle on the back. But there's choices. Okay, so lump of clay. I'm just gonna make this little diamond shape with it and pinch. And as you can see, as I pinch, this little shape is getting longer. So I'm definitely gonna wind up with more handle than I need, which is fine. I can just cut that down, no big deal. It's kind of going back and forth, letting the pinching happen. So see, I'm not pinching that hard. I'm being pretty gentle about it. And that results in something where the, um, the pinch marks are still evident, but um, it doesn't take over so much. Um, and it gives me a little bit more control because this is a small piece of clay. I don't, I don't need to push it that hard. I can just use the little tips of my fingers while I'm at this and go over it a couple times. And I'll wind up with something far more stable. All right. Now I can, you can see, I don't know if you can see, can you see? There's like some very delicate little surface cracks here um, that come from the pinching and the stretching. You can, if you want, kind of smooth them out. That is at this point an, an aesthetic question. It doesn't really affect the functionality of the piece. Like I said, I'm kind of enjoying this look of, you know, the, the mark of the maker all over everything. So I'm gonna leave it, but you do you. So one of the things that's really important is if you're gonna do the spout or the handle on the back, you wanna make sure that the center of your handle lines up with the center of your spout. And I'll even sometimes make just a very gentle little line to help me figure out where the hell that is by lining up a fettling knife. And this gives me just some more information and it makes it easier to make choices. I'm going to attach the top of the handle to match up with the top of the spout and then the bottom of the handle where the bottom of the spout is. Not only is that visually satisfying, but it also makes the most sense mechanically. Um, it helps you pick up from where the top is and you're, you're pivoting around the middle, which is where the largest volume of the T is. And then, you know, your, your sort of break point is where you're stopping. So I can make sure I have that exactly right by kind of turning this to the side. Make sure you can see that. Turning this to the side and lining up where the top of the spout is and where the bottom of the spout is. I'll be able to erase these marks later, so I'm just trying to make them nice and shallow so that I don't get confused. Okay. Cut off the top of where the handle is so that I'm not confused, like so. Bottom of the handle, like so. Make sure that my hand can comfortably fit in there, like so. Whoop. OK. 
cut off the excess like so. Okay, now that's not enough for it to stick permanently, but it is enough for me to stop and take a minute and really look at this handle. Um, that is something I have done an embarrassingly large amount of times in my life, especially during demos, I'll cop to it, where I get really like involved in talking and I don't look. So stop and look. It's always worth stopping and looking to make sure that everything is lining up where you want it to line up and that it looks the way you want it to look before you make decisions about where to place things. Slip and score, slip and score, not even really slipping and scoring. I'm just a little bit of toothbrush and water here. Squish, squish. So you can kind of wriggle this. And I want to squish enough so that I see a little bit of the slip that came from the toothbrush and water is squeezing out of the sides. So I'm pushing in. I'm not pinching. I'm pushing in. All right, once you have that, I can, you know, get started on smoothing out some of these lines if I want. All right. Now, when it comes to making the spout, before I get started on attaching it, I just want to very delicately, very gently trace where it's going to attach all the way around the spout, like so. This gives me a good idea about where to slip and score so that I'm not confused like that, okay? Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of slipping and scoring here. And I can just kind of gently go boop and see now I've got like this little marky wet ring here that shows me where to slip and score here. Now while I'm waiting for that to happen, let's talk about cutting into this part. I want to make sure I'm leaving a little bit of a margin for the, the edge of the spout to sit on. So this edge here needs to sit right here. So I don't want to cut this part away. I'm actually cutting in about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now some people do, um, they uh. use uh, hole punches and just punch a lot of holes, which totally works. Um, the advantage of that, of course, you know, you don't have to worry so much about um, cutting out too much. Also, if you are uh, the kind of person who likes loose leaf tea, um, then the holes will prevent the tea from clogging your spout, which is a totes legit uh, issue. And, um, and that is all cool, but I find A, most people use bags, let's be honest. And uh, uh, B, I have glazed shut so many teapots uh, in my life by accident thinking that I had all of the holes completely clear of glaze before they went into the kiln and then it turns out I was completely wrong. So uh, I just don't bother anymore. I just make one big honk and hole. And if you want to use loose leaf tea, more power to ya. All right, now I'm going to gently stick this on, but I'm not going to do a lot of squeezing. At this point, we are at the point where that opening means that this teapot is in more danger of collapsing. So I want to be, again, gentle and thoughtful. Make sure that first off the placement is right before you start doing any work. We're in good shape. So now um, I can, if I can hold the spout where it is, I can gently use just the tip of my finger to kind of squish in just a wee bit. 
Not a lot, just a wee. I just want to make sure that's good and solid and on there. And then once I have that on, then I can do things like use a rubber rib to kind of, or not rubber rib, rubber nubbin to sort of smooth the attachment point without doing a lot of collapsing. Now, if it does start collapsing on you, which can happen, you can actually use that opening, the spout, to help you out. You just have to not mind the fact that you're getting clay on your, in your lips. See? Isn't that cool? Puffs out. It's also a good way to check for leaks. Make sure if there's any spots where your where your teapot body is uh, oop, uh oh where your teapot body is uh, um, not attached to the spout. I think I should have left this longer. It's getting a little. Can you guys see? It's getting a little collapsy around here, around this part here where the bottom is. I think that's just because it's a little too soft and I shouldn't have opened it up so soon, but oh well. Let me show you quick then before the poor rest of this baby collapses on how to do the lid. So I've got this uh, space between the spout and the handle. Um, you don't have to make a perfectly symmetrical circle. That's everybody's first instinct. And I will say that if you decide that you want to make a perfectly symmetrical circle, go for it. But uh, I do better when I make something deliberately asymmetrical because then it's easier to get the, 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 the lid on just right and uh, because it has its own specific shape and nobody can tell if it's warped. <laughs> so when I'm cutting this off, I'm kind of going in at an angle. I'm not cutting it off flat. I'm not going straight down. I'm cutting it off at a nice 45 degree angle and that makes something like a gallery. On my lid. Like that. And see, that's a very ugly looking cut, but that's okay. We're gonna go in and we're gonna smooth it out so that it matches better. Let's set that aside. Make sure to smooth this part out. Oh, you can see how wet this is. Oh boy, oh boy. It's totally collapsing on me. Poor baby. Well, on the upside, you guys totally see now why you should wait. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to take a little. A bit of clay. Roll out a little snake and then I'm just pinching it flat. This will become the flange on the lid so that when it goes on it'll hold the lid on securely. So this is going to go on and we'll pretend I did all the proper slipping and scoring. This teapot's not going to make it kids so you know. Like this. But so this little flange right here will act to stabilize the lid once it's in there. It'll keep the lid from sliding off as you pour your tea. And then maybe a little something something to become a knob. Whenever you make a knob, make sure that where it attaches is smaller than the top of it and that gives your finger some place to grip. Again, we'll pretend I slipped and scored that properly and that I had let everything rest the way I should have. So there it is, one slightly collapsed teapot, pinch pot teapot. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys there, and uh, um, hopefully I'll see some of you later. Lincoln Square Pottery Studio uh, is going to be at the... Um, the march that's happening in our local park, Wells Park, 
uh, for uh, to protest police uh, violence and brutality. And so maybe I'll see some of you there. All right, that's it. Bye, guys.